One, two, three. The bigger picture. That, that is, is what, what you Hollywood would stand for. Some Tommy Talks, and today we have on a show that he morally wrestles with regret, wrestling with regret, and also he looks like the iconic Jim Cornette. <laughs> well, you know, I think the the, the real the, the, the real story about, about me and Jim Cornette's connection lies somewhere with a paternity test somewhere. I don't know. The results have been fudged. We've been trying to get on it. We're trying to get to the bottom of this thing. But as of right now, we, we may look similar, but that's about where it begins and ends. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so how are you doing today, sir? <laughs> I'm doing good. By the way, I, yeah, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but you introduced me as the guy who looks like Jim Cornette. I'm Brian Zane, for those of you who don't know. Brian Zane, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Zane. And I apologize. It was my, my bad. I, I, it's all I, right. I know you want to get. I, I, I know you wanted to really get that joke in there. You were very focused on getting that joke in there. So you know, kudos to you Mr. on that. Mr. Brian Zane from Wrestling with Regrets, and Mr. Zane, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. I'm I'm glad to be here. Uh, I, I love it. I I love your channel. I, I I've been watching your channel for a while. I discovered your channel a while back ago. I'm a big part of the Joe Cronin community, and the Dead on Dave community. You know who those people are? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Joe Cronin, part of the Internet Darlings show happening Saturday, April 1st in Orlando. You're going to be there, too? Well, it's my show. I'm running it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was your show. I'm, I, I, um, I've i heard of everybody going down there, Grimm's Toy Show, uh, a few other people were going to be down there. Yeah, and I had the... no idea that your, that was going to be your show. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. It's, you know, like the, the idea came about... For doing this show like last year after Mania, me and my my partner who you've seen on the show, Jay Biggs, he's a, my my sort of my business partner in a way. Um, he's a good friend of mine. We were talking about it because I always wanted to do like a live wrestling with regret show. That's kind of where it all began because like I'm a fan of like different podcasts who have gone on the road and done live versions of their show in front of like audiences in the theaters and stuff. And it's like I want to do something like that with wrestling with regret. But, like, how could I do that? Like, just the logistics and trying to think of location and time and place to do it. And just what I would talk about was something that I uh, dealt with trying to figure out what to do. And then me and Jay Biggs were talking and like, we should do, like, a YouTube super show. Get a bunch of different wrestling YouTubers together uh, to talk about wrestling. And that's kind of how the idea came about for Internet Darlings. So, yeah, it's me. It's Adam Blompier from What Culture. Uh, very polarizing. But a, lot, a lot of polarizing figures in this lineup. It's me, Blompier, Grimm from Grimm's Toy Show, Joe Cronin, like you mentioned, JD from New York, Matthew, uh, who's the curator of Botchamania, as well as Stephen Larson from the Going and Raw podcast. I might have overbooked this one a little bit, but it's going to be a pretty big show. It's you know the biggest wrestling YouTubers under one roof, the first of its kind uh, kind of an event. There's going to be panel discussions and Q&A with the fans, and we're going to have some fun too, some sketches and stuff. So it's it, it, this is my baby. This is my passion project, and um, I really hope people who are going to be in Orlando for WrestleMania, we can come out and see it. Really? You know, I wish I could be down there. I'd love to be, because I'm kind of like, you know, uh, you know, the interviewer of you two. I wish I could be there, but I don't really have the money. I'm currently trying to raise money to go to Playlist, and I might be Soonly uh, raising it to go to in September to go to Washington uh, for that one. I've decided probably D Washington D.C. or Washington State. Washington D.C. Oh, okay. 
That's where, good. DC's where better. Are you D- located, D- sir? DC DC's nicer than Washington State. Uh, uh, no, I uh, well, I'm from Oregon originally, but I live in Reno now. I've been living here for the uh, last uh, almost seven years now. I... Reno, Nevada. Reno, Nevada. Which, by the way, for those of you who are curious, is not a hop, skip, and a jump away to Las Vegas. It is an eight-hour drive. So, <laughs> it is on the other end of the state. It is not right next to it. I don't want to draw a negative side of this interview, but I was watching one of your reviews, and I had to disagree with you on one thing you did say. Okay. Well, you were talking about black wrestlers, and then you brought up The Rock. Technically, um, in the category of African Americans, and I hope you don't take this as a negative thing as my opinion, and I'm not racist. I'm just... Um, Always good to preface it with that. Always good to preface it with, I'm not racist. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I don't agree that the the Rock is black. I think he he's Samoan. He his father was African American, but he is fully on Samoan. And so, uh, one thing as I've I've always said about the WWE is WWE tends to be a little bit racist, and they they'll give the, their African American wrestlers the heavyweight title, but you have never seen a WWE champion with just recently, you've seen, a, as you know, uh, Roman Reigns. He's Samoan, okay? Like He's Samoan because he's a part of The Rock. So, in the past of the history of WWE, you have never seen a black WWE su- superstar, you know, with the, with the championship. Wouldn't you agree? Well, yeah, I mean, you have a good point. And that's the thing. I, I knew I was going to draw controversy talking about The Rock. On this countdown, um, you know, and, and I didn't want to make it sound like I was white splaining things. Like, here's the deal, black folks, you better accept him as one of your own. That was, it was, it, it really was kind of just my opinion. Just like I know he is of mixed race. I think that the company does like to prop him up more as Samoan than black for reasons I'm not totally sure. Maybe it's just due to some long-standing loyalty with Samoan wrestlers of the past. The fact that the Anawaii family is vast and the rock is 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 part of that not by family not by blood uh but he is part of that family in, in a loose connection so yeah i mean it's it, it's a tough one like i've gotten i've gotten a very wide range of responses from my black viewers who have commented and some have said right on totally the rock should be recognized as black as a black champion others have said no i don't think he's black because he is not fully black and so that that's a whole can of worms uh worth a worth a ton of think pieces that i don't want to get into here i understand just, i'm sorry but but, just, but, but I, I, and, I, and, I, and, and again it's it's it, it's your your you it's within your right to have the opinion you know but this again it was it was just my opinion i think the rock should be recognized as black i, I think people saying he's not black enough i i, I still stand by the fact it's not fair it's like it's with our most recent president before our current one it's like he's the first black president you know, uh, you know, especially if he did something we didn't like, and he's totally black, all 100% black. But like, if he does something we like, oh, then he's blackish. You know, it's it, that's just again, that's a whole can of worms. But it's just you know what it, it's what side of that person do you accept? What side of that person are you celebrating? And I know it, it, I'm not trying to shut out his Samoan heritage. I mean, he literally wears it on his sleeve, but I think at the same time, it's like he's got a black father. He comes from, you know, he does have black lineage. And I, I think you, you make a good point. Like the other black wrestlers who have won heavyweight championships, it's never been like the WWE championship. And that is, you know, it is an issue. I think, you know, if you want like the full black WWE champion, yes, I think the company has deprived us of that over the years. And The Rock is the closest thing we have to it. Um so yeah, one day I think we'll get there. Hopefully, I mean it, it's gonna be. I, I don't know when it's gonna happen. Of the current crop of guys, I don't know who it would be. Um, you know, maybe someone from the new day will break out if and when the team eventually breaks up. But um, yeah, it's it, it is tough. Like, you know, when you've got the fact that every other federation in history essentially has had black champions. WCW had it. You know, uh, Ring of Honor. They just had Jay Lethal, one of their longest reigning champions in history, uh, as a black man. Um, TNA had Ron Killings, and of course, we're, and we're still waiting for you know WWE. Um, I'm trying to think who in ECW did ECW have a black champion? I don't know. Uh, I could be. I'm pretty sure they didn't have a black champion either, black heavyweight champion. Um, 
So yeah, I guess that's a small club, ECW and WWE. You know, of course they did they did a make good. You know, the last ECW champion under WWE was Ezekiel Jackson. So, ooh, that was, dodged a bullet there. <laughs> well, I'm glad we, that we dipped into a little bit of controversy and a little bit of, you know, a little bit of conversation here. So, folks, we're gonna dive into the interview here. So, um, Adam, correctly. I'm Brian. Brian, Brian, Brian. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I, I have a real bad memory. It's okay. Brian. So, Brian, what was, uh, who inspired you to be here on YouTube? Um, you know, I, I draw inspiration from a lot of different people, I think. And I've said this before in interviews in the past. The whole reason I made my channel is because I'm, I'm a big fan of guys like the Nostalgia Critic. Um, Me too. Yeah. Angry Video Game Nerd, Phalus, Todd in the Shadows. I'm just a big fan of that whole genre of, you know, like nerdy guy makes jokes about bad things in a certain medium. And, you know, four, five years ago when I first had the idea for this show, like the channel's going to be four years old in June. But like, you know, five years ago when I first had the idea for the channel, I was looking around and I saw there's no one really doing that style of humor and criticism with a little bit of sketch comedy thrown in no one was doing that for wrestling because they were doing it for you know movies and you know tv shows and different genres of music uh comic books anime there's always something for all these different mediums but then no one was doing it but for wrestling and so i wanted to do it i figured i could do it because i had the technical know-how i've got you know I think my opinions are, you know, worth worth sharing, <laughs> and uh, I, I was fancying myself as a strong writer. That's kind of why I did it. So, yeah, those guys were a huge influence to me. Um, as far as my overall style of humor, I mean, I think, and this might sound a little strange, but I think Weird Al Yankovic is one of my biggest influences of humor, just in general, because I mean, I, I grew up listening to him, and so. Yeah, he's never been like a comedic writer in the sense of like doing sketches and stuff. But I mean, it's just his. By the way, my dog Mocha, everyone, she's in the shot <laughs> no here. No problem. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, Weird Al to me has been a big comedic influence just in general. Um, Pat Oswalt, I get a lot of inspiration from as far as my humor. I don't think you know his his jokes are so much more intelligent than mine. But uh, I mean, I yeah, he's one of my strongest influences for comedy but yeah as far as just like the whole aesthetic i mean and my whole channel stylistically is a huge ripoff of like angry video game nerd nostalgia critics so you know it, it, if, it ain't, if it ain't broke don't fix it so that's kind of where i've drawn my inspiration from so basically you're saying you're you're basically the baby of the nostalgia critic and the angry video game nerd which i am too which i'm more of like the the child of of uh you know doug of the angry of the nostalgia doug. critic and also cool duder and mm -hmm. you know in that variety uh, right well, those guys sudden. yeah those guys i mean they have done they have done more i think they're probably two of the most influential people not all of youtube because there's other genres of youtube out there that you know we haven't even begun to discuss but i think of this genre like those two have done it better than anyone else and everyone myself included want desperately to catch up to what they've done and so uh it's you know i i i have no i take no shame in calling myself the nostalgia critic of wrestling or a nostalgia critic ripoff in terms of style i still think that my content like he's he's, he's never gonna do wrestling i saw someone on channel awesome recently do a wrestling themed video and i was looking at the comments section and there was like this range of shock and surprise happy and sad surprise or somebody somebody on his channel was doing wrestling um, and, and it was originally my dream when I first did this channel. I was like, oh, one day I'm going to get on Channel Awesome and be part of the Nostalgia Critics circle of, of friends. Uh, I, that dream has kind of passed. I don't think – I'm not sure if I want Channel Awesome uh, to be part of that anymore. Like, it just depends if the opportunity is there and if it makes sense for me. Uh, but, I mean, that is kind of – that was one of my earliest like, motivations for, 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 get it, for doing this channel was to eventually become part of that circle. That is also, you know, I'm just going to say me and you agree a lot to that because uh, it's actually been one of my dreams to step in the squared circle with Doug Walker and sit down and do a review with him and just be like, oh, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to warn you that I am a super, I actually have a tombstone out in my front room when Doug Walker quit 
when he stopped making nostalgia critic videos, I had yeah, a, for few... a month huh? <laughs> for all of a month that he stopped doing them. <laughs> then he realized that that's where he, where he was making his money, and he couldn't uh, he couldn't walk away from it. Yeah, I know. I had a little funeral session for him. I even like dug up the ground, made a little little plot area. I even it's on my channel where uh, my father did the eulogy for oh, the wow. nostalgia critic. Mm -hmm. And it sits in my front room, the tombstone. It used to be in my room when I lived with my family. But, yeah, you're looking at a uh, big uh, <clears throat> Doug Walker fan, honestly, and a Nostalgia Critic fan. That's his real name, folks, by the way, Doug Walker, professionally. But the Nostalgia Critic is his stage name. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry, my, my voice has been kind of, uh, for some reason, I'm not sick, but my voice has just been kind of scratchy recently. Yep. I apologize. No worries. Now, where did you come up with the name Wrestling with Regrets? Uh, Wrestling with Regrets, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I get that question a lot. And honestly, like, my story changes every time because even I don't remember exactly how I came up with it. Like, you know, when I was coming up, when I was trying to figure out a name for the channel, I, you know, thought briefly, you know, try to incorporate my name. It was the Brain of Zane or something. And, um, but then I decided not to do that. I wanted something a little more easily, you know, more universal, essentially. And um, yeah, I guess I guess I liked the phrase "wrestling with something, something." You know, like wrestling with shadows, the Bret Hart documentary. I wanted to do something like that, but I wanted to like have like a word that like made it sound alliterative. Um, so I was trying to think of a good R word. Um, actually, I wanted a good W word originally, and I couldn't find a good one to really reflect you know, the, the vibe that I was going for with this channel, you know, just to review bad, regretful things, uh, in a sense. Uh, but nothing was coming up for W name. So, okay, well, we come up with R, but look for R name. And then like, I was just going to do WWR, we were going to be the initials for whatever I could figure out. And I found the word regret and then it kind of hit me. It's like, Oh, like I could put a W in front of this, like wrestling has a W I'll put regret have a W and that's, I'm pretty sure that's how I came to that conclusion. <laughs> this is like, it's four years ago and I don't really have the best memory in the world for those little things. But, you know, I'm glad I picked that name because it's stuck and, um, you know, it's, it's eye catching. It's a memorable name because of the, the different spelling. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad I came up with that name. However it happened. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I recently watched one of your reviews. Um, what was it? The uh, the old Hulk Hogan movie where uh, he, the old wrestling, Thunderlips, or no, not Thunderlips, but... Uh, oh, uh, No Holds Barred? Yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> it's funny and stupid at the same time. <laughs> it, it, is, it is, it actually is kind of like a guilty pleasure of mine. It is so bad, it's good. Um, and really, like, the MVP of that movie is Kurt Fuller, the actor who played Brel. Uh, cause he just like eats the scenery in every scene he's in and he's just so committed to it. And, you know, when you've got this combination of Hulk Hogan, who is an extreme over actor with Kurt Fuller, who is much of the same, but like he's actually classically trained and he actually has professional experience as an actor. When you have these two colliding, it's just, it's, it's cinema magic, um, you know, it's it's truly one of the yeah one of the greater movies of that decade. Mm. Now, uh, what is your all time favorite review and, and video? Ooh, that's tough because there is a lot that I'm proud of. Um, you know, I I really like the Cornette gets it wrong video that I did, the first Cornette parody video I did. That was kind of my first like viral ish kind of video before my channel really blew up. Um, so I I like that for having that kind of move that that video almost kind of helped me get on the map in a way, and also getting Jim Cornette, who at the time I hadn't met or really talked to, to get him to retweet it and say it was the greatest thing he ever saw. Like that was like that made my I, I was you know had my day job at the time. I could not I literally could not focus on my day job for the rest of the day because I had Cornette retweeting it, Cole Cabana and the Young Bucks all retweeted the same day, and it was just like nah, my brain exploded. It was it was amazing. So I'm very proud of that one. As far as like a straight up just like review, like a long form review I've done, um, Heroes of Wrestling, the first thing I did with Adam Blompier was great. Also, J James Mitchell, Sinister Minister, as a cameo at the end. I was proud of that for what it took to get it all together, and it finally came out. I was really proud of it. Um, you know, and like 
I'll, I think my strongest work has been from this most recent season that I've done, season six, like, uh, you know, just in the romantic wrestling comedy, which just I did a couple of weeks ago, and um, Santa's Sleigh again with Adam Blompier, and you know, my stuff with I did, you know, I, I did some stuff with Cole Cabana back in December. I'm pretty proud of that one. Um, I, and, and then of course the video I did with Jim, uh, with Jim Cornette in the flesh, where I was Vince Russo, and in the end he punches me out. Like I went to Louisville for that, and that was a really cool experience uh, again to work with him. So there's a lot that I'm proud of. I mean, this has been just like it's been a big every video I'm learning something new and there's something for me to be satisfied with and proud of. And so, I mean, this whole channel has been a labor of love. It's been a passion project of mine. And, you know, I've just been really happy with how things have turned out. Now, uh, I have to say that. Your channel is, I have to say that your channel is really good. That it really has a backbone. It's really has that good flow to it, and uh, that I think that your channel is really entertaining. And I think it's one of those channels that really sticks here on <clears throat> here on YouTube. Thank you. And it's a, a really electrifying channel, I have to say. Thank you. Now, um, what is the future for mm. your channel? What is the future? I don't know, you know, um, I'm always trying to do things that are different. I'm always trying to branch out and explore different avenues. Like, you know, when I started doing my channel, if you told me I was going to make a regular series out of me cooking stuff out of the I old just that actually. WWF cookbook, if you told me I was going to, I have it here because I always have to look up future episodes, but like, if you told me I was going to use this as a source of material for a recurring segment, I, you know, if you told me that three years ago, I wouldn't have believed you, you know? I never planned on doing pay-per-view reviews, and I especially had, you know, a couple of years ago, the last thing on my mind was reviewing Raw and SmackDown on a regular basis. Um, but over time, I saw the demand was there, you know? Like, I'm always trying to diversify and change things up with my channel, um, but at the same time, try and commit to the core value of those Thursday episodes, those long-form reviews. Like, that's that's the cornerstone of my channel. So I was trying to branch into different things. Like, I tried doing the video game streaming stuff, and, like, I like doing it, but I'm so busy with the other stuff on my channel, I feel like I don't have time for it. And it's something I want to get back into. It's like it's it's like that one branch of my channel where it's like doesn't get as much love. The video game streams, that those will come back. Um, it's just a matter of like finding finding a schedule that works for me to do it. Um, but it's yeah, I'm, that, that, that's the thing. I'm always I'm always trying stuff that's different. I don't know what the next different thing is going to be. Really, it's like Internet Darlings is kind of like my number one th my thing now. Like I was talking about the thing in Orlando on the first. And it's sold uh, out, actually. No, it is not sold out. <laughs> I wish it was. I thought um, I thought it sold out. No, it, it's not there yet. I'd like it to be sold out. Um, you know. But, you know, it's, I'm expecting, you know, maybe a rush of people at the door. Uh, I'm going to be selling physical tickets. If people do want to get their tickets early, though, just to get it out of the way, they can go to the Eventbrite page for it, which if you go to my Twitter feed, at Z-Man Brian Zane, uh, it's the pinned tweet at the very top. So, like, if you want to get more well, information about worry. the show. If you give me mm -hmm. the link, it will go down in the description below. Okay, I'll do that. Um, I'll send you the link. But, yeah, I mean, it's... You know, it's not a sellout yet, um, and, you know, there are people out there, so, some people who don't like me and my channel who think that the show will be a failure if I don't sell out. Um, you know, I can get why they might say that, but honestly, like, I, if I can, you know, we've sold over 100 tickets so far, um, and honestly, if, you know, the fact that I had that many people going to a show, like, I'm, here's the thing. I've never run a show before, I've, and you, you could tell based on the organization of how this has gone on. But it's like I've never run a wrestling show. I've never run a show anything like this before, so this is the first of its kind for me as well. And I'm running a show on WrestleMania weekend in Orlando um, competing with tons of other legitimate wrestling shows, competing with guys who are doing shows like Bruce Prichard and Jim Ross and all these different – huge names and i'm like i have a show that's going on around the same time as all that you know and the fact that i've got 
over 100 people so far who have bought tickets with more to come, then I think that makes me a winner. It makes me – this is a success to me. You know, If people are buying tickets and if they enjoy themselves, then that even makes it more of a success. Now, you know? what day is this exactly that is going to be happening? It's going to be Saturday, April 1st at 4 o'clock. Uh, at the Embassy Suites at International Drive, uh, it's a two-hour show. There's going to be the the, pe- the names I've mentioned before, as well as there's going to be some special cameos from other YouTubers that have not been announced, but they will be in attendance. Um, yeah, it's just going to be it's going to be kind of like a variety show. We're going to be talking about big topics in wrestling. We're going to be doing we're going to be covering WrestleMania. Um, and we're going to have, again, we're going to invite the fans who are there to ask us questions. You know, it's kind of, a, it's going to be the biggest collaboration of all is what kind of a way I'm billing it as. Um, I have a question. So yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, sorry to interrupt you. I apologize. I mean, to interrupt no you. No worries. Um, now you think I could be considered as press and get in for like free or what do you think? If you can make it to Orlando, then I will let you cover it. But um, you know, like you said, I know money's tight. Um, but yeah, um, the thing is, oh, people have been asking this to me, to me a lot as well. Will the show be live streamed? Uh, the answer is no, because for logistical and money reasons, um, trying to stream something out of a hotel facility is just totally off the table for me. But I do have a camera crew who's going to be there. We are going to record it. And then the idea is um, I'm going to take the show, break it up into a bunch of different videos, and distribute them out among the seven principal channels who are being represented uh, at the show, myself included. And so we'll be kind of like releasing them concurrently with each other as a way to help promote, you know, you know, crossover stuff. We'll, be, we'll link to everyone else's channels you know, in the descriptions and stuff. And so, you know, if you can't make it to Internet Darlings Live, uh, it won't be live streams. So you won't be able to watch it live, but you will be able to watch it in portions, um, you know, among the different channels that are re- represented. So that's kind of my way of making it up to people who can't be there live. Is it a one day? Is it, is it, is it like a three day event or is it a one day event? It's, it's a one time event from four to six on that Saturday. Um, you know, if it does really well, if it does gangbusters, I might bring it back the following year in New Orleans. I might make it a regular thing. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. I, at the same time, though, I kind of want to enjoy myself, you know. For the, the, you know, I'm going to be super busy WrestleMania weekend because I'm going to be at WrestleCon as well with my guest, D'Lo Brown. Um, you know, I'm, I'd, I'd like to work some shows. If anyone in Orlando is booking, you know, reach out to me at Z-Man Brian Zane. Um and of course, I'll be there for WrestleMania, so it's gonna be a very busy weekend for me. And like, depending on how this goes, I might bring back Internet Darlings for future years, or I might just stop entirely and just say one's enough. But we'll see how it goes. I'm just, I'm open to it, is all. Yeah, that tears me up because like, I'd like to. I, I I'm gonna figure out. I'm gonna talk to somebody and see if they want to go down to that to your show, because I have I have to provide on transportation, but. If I can like talk to somebody like one of my family members and see if they would be interested in going down, and uh, you know definitely let him know that uh, you know I'll work out the details with him. But uh, sure, you know I would definitely love to come down. Joe, I've been friends with Joe Cron. I'd love to meet him. I'd love to meet you in person. Also, Grimm's Toy Show, and it'd be awesome just to interview them all and meet them and mm-hmm. uh, get to be press. And that's, that's another thing. That's another thing. After the show, we're gonna do a whole meet and greet with the fans. Uh, we'll be signing stuff, getting pictures, selling selling merch. Uh, you know, we'll definitely. Uh, it's definitely gonna be a very interactive experience between the fans and the YouTubers. Because usually, the closest you can get is you know exchanging on comment sections or on Twitter. So this is you know not everyone gets to meet their favorite YouTubers and stuff. So. Um, this is going to be a chance for people who are going to be in Orlando to meet them face to face. Um, and I think it's going to be a great experience. All right. So here's a segment where I turn it on you and I say, you're welcome. It's a segment where you can ask me one question and one impression. It's just all part of the show. Have you ever watched, if you watched, have you watched an episode of Tommy Talks? Uh, not, not that far into it. No, I didn't, I didn't get this far at the interviews. No. (laughs) All right, but uh, I hope you don't think this is unprofessional. That's just a no. part of my a segment of my show. It's all good. Uh, so you want me to ask you a question? And an impression, you know, one question, one impression. 
uh, who would the impression be of? Anybody you want, and I'll do it. Oh, okay. Um, okay, well, mm, now on the spot here, i got to think of a question to ask you. Um, okay, here we go. Um, who is your favorite YouTuber, and it doesn't have to be me? Um, I would have to say my all-time favorite YouTuber is uh, uh, definitely the guy that you said, the Nostalgia Critic, and oh. my other favorite is uh, Cool Duder. And uh, also, the other guy is Chris Perillo, and now Harley Mornstein. Okay. Ooh, so now i got to come up with an impression. I'm kind of like, I'm looking around my office of, of knickknacks just for, for, for inspiration. Like, who could I do an impression of? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I want to do a Jim Cornette one, but I don't have anything lined up to say. But I could do, I, you know, Tommy, let me tell you something. I, you know, I've been, I've, been booking, I've been booking territories all over this country. For years now, I've worked in WWF, WCW. I've worked with Shit Stained Vince. I've worked with Vincent Mann. I've worked with that Bucky Beaver teeth asshole Kevin Dunn. And I tell you, the one thing that I know fans don't want, Tommy, is stupid, flippy bullshit. They don't want comedy in their wrestling. <laughs> hey, let me drink my imaginary Sprite. <clears throat> Tommy. I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs> I, you know, if I had something prepared, I could do more of a Jim Cornette impression. But uh, that's all I got. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I understand. That was a good impression, by the way. Top of the line, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's it's what I was born to do, was to look and act like Jim Cornette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, I'll, 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 do, I'll, I'll do one of you. Hi, okay. folks. Brian Zane here with wrestling regrets, and I always want to say, where is my father? I want my father. I'm just, no, I'm talking about with, you know, Jim Cornette. Yeah, no, I got where the joke, Jim yeah. Cornette? <laughs> oh, sorry. I hope Good stuff. Set that's... You with that. No, no, that's, it, it was different. <laughs> <laughs> my voice is very screwed up right now. I don't know why. I actually can do Elmo, too. Oh, well, let's not do that. <laughs> I hear enough Elmo in my day-to-day. I got two kids, so I hear enough Elmo. The last thing I want is is, is imitation Elmo. I never picture. I just, with the image of you two, I never pictured you a father. Yeah, that, that surprises a lot of people. People think I'm in my early 20s <laughs> and living in my parents' basement. Uh, no, no, I'm a, I'm a happily married man living in a, a house that I own, and this is my office, not a bedroom, not a basement, and, uh, you know, yeah, a father of two, two lovely kids, so. <laughs> now, uh, curious question, uh, what was that question? Shoot, don't you hate when you have a brain fart? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially when your wife is, do you remember our anniversary, and you're like, oh. Uh, See, I've never been that bad. I never see because I've got the I got the anniversary engraved on the inside of my wedding ring, so I don't I don't ever forget it. <laughs> You're just like, okay, I have a ring. I'm not married, but I'm actually a single man that lives in a two bedroom apartment, so I don't really have anybody. You're, there. you're living I'm, the dream. You're living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, folks, April, go down and see Internet Darlings in Orlando, Florida. Joe Cronin, Grimm's Toy Show, Mr. Adam Blompier, and mm. maybe, I don't know if I could work something out, Tommy NC 2010 yeah. might be if we, there. Maybe. If, we can get you, if we can get you down there, we'll make something work, man. Definitely. I, uh, um, I definitely have to figure something out. I'm, I uh, Right now, if, uh, you know, of course, one thing about it is, is right now I'm trying to raise money for Playlist. And then yeah, everybody's thinking, that, yeah. oh, wait a minute, you have money, Tommy? Why are you using that to go to this wrestling event? And I'm like, I have a lot of heat on me. If you don't well, know that. If they hate, let them hate. You'll drop the whole clan and lay their ass down for the three seconds hand. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> oh, God. But, folks, his name is Brian Zane, and he has the show Wrestling with Regrets, and he's one of the most electrifying YouTubers here on YouTube, and I say that about every YouTuber I interview. So, oh, good. 
<laughs> I'm glad I'm part of a good club. But yeah, it's it's wrestling with regret, singular. It's not plural. Wrestling with regret with a W at the beginning. Uh, look for me on Twitter at Zman Brian Zane. Facebook wrestling with regret, and of course the YouTube channel, 171,000 subscribers and climbing. So, uh, Tommy, I really appreciate being on here. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. And if you stay a little bit afterwards, I'm gonna end the show here. And as always, folks, I'm Tommy NC 2010. And I'm keeping you on the inside fact. Subscribe, support, stay positive, and woo, woo, the nature boy is here, woo.